always do a bunch of work to figure out like one, what am I doing to contribute? What can I do to change? But then two, about like, what do I see as important from like the studying that I've done? And when you bring ideas to a meeting with solutions, I think people are more open to hearing them versus like, it's all screwed up guys. We gotta, we gotta fix it all. And like attacking people, like nobody's going to actually do anything differently. And like you said, make small changes, make baby changes, but try your best to involve the whole group because if everyone feels like they know what's going on and they feel like mm-hmm. they, have a plan to follow and they feel empowered to know what they're doing. It's a little bit different than like one person, especially if that person is at the top, just like forcing change throughout the whole gym. Everyone just gets a little mm-hmm. bit simple, you know? Right. I think you just got to sit down and have the meeting. Like yeah. here's where I'm looking. You have to have, but you have to have everything in place. Like sure. here's my ideas. This is what I want to do. This is where we want to go. And then from there, the coaches can go, well, what about that? Then they can ask questions and they can mm-hmm. say, well, can we do this? Can we do that? Then you can look at how does that fit in with the efficiency of the program? And then from there, then they can, again, start here. This is your base. Once you have your base, then you can start to gradually move to those other things. Yeah. You know, I think, but I think you have to start, here's the ground floor. Mm. And, you know, we didn't just change the, the upper level optional warm up. We took that level 10 warm up and we re looked at it all the way down to pre team and yeah. all the way so that from pre team, they're doing the same style of warm up. It's just every level the skills change a little bit right. so that by the time you're built up to level 10. So, so the idea is from the beginning up and from the top down, we're all on the same page. Yeah. It's so incredible from like the actual like physiology of it, of like what someone, what happens to someone when they get a week, a three day weekend to go out with their friends and family and not think about gymnastics. But then also too, is like the amount of trust that you bank with the athlete when you like can give a little bit and be like, listen, like, no, go take your Friday night, go have fun. Like, we'll get back and we'll get it pretty hard on Monday. Like Monday through Friday morning, we'll go super hard and like, and you can enjoy yourself. Right. Like I think like when athletes really see eye to eye with you on that and like, wow, this person cares about me as a human and doesn't think it's like more and more and more all the time. One is like, that's completely not in alignment with how science says we work as a human, but also too, it's like that emotional kind of banking is so important because there are other times when it might come up in the middle of season. You're like, I know you really want to do this, but like, listen, like big me coming up, it matches in line with your goals. Like, I think we should probably sacrifice this Friday um, to, to go through this well. And then like, we'll, we'll give you another time off or something like that. I think you have to be aware like this is a kid. This is a ten-year-old kid, or eleven-year-old kid, or a twelve-year-old kid. Like their their bones are soft. Like things are <laughs> things yeah. aren't quite ready necessarily for that 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 hard pounding, that hard numbers. And is it just to satisfy you know your ego? Like look what I got, mm, you know. Yeah. And the, and I'm. It's true, man. Nothing against, it's so like, true. I, yeah, I just want I want coaches to be more aware of what they're doing and what they're working with. I think. Yeah. You know, you're working with a young human. Yeah. let's get them to let's get them to older human age like that's the best feeling for me as someone who on their winter break comes back to the gym and says hello or somebody who wants to go to like pt school in my example or for you somebody who wants to like stay involved in coaching it's like dude you made a significant impact on their life and that should be your marker on if mm-hmm. one you're a good coach and a human but two is like if your program is successful right i think that's how you should measure it is not based on how many kids you get to nationals um but also as well as like performances and like what's the vibe of your gym? Do people come in and they're super pissed? They don't want to come to work and they're just like upset. Or is it like the kids are pretty happy despite the work, the coaches are happy and you feel like mm. there's a good, there's a good vibe there. You know what I mean? I think you have to have definitely that those, those weeks built into your programming, mm. you know, um, always 4th of July week is always a good one to take off. Yeah. So sure. there's, there's July's off. And then you have at the end of nationals to take that off. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, most of the time they have Christmas, a couple yep. weeks there, they're off. Um, the, I think they need that time to be kids. Totally. And, and, and that's the, the summer training too. Like how many hours do you need to go? You know, mm. How many hours do you have to be in the gym? Do you need a six hour program? Do you need the beginning and the evening where, you know, we, we attempted last year to have the, the elite group, the girls training that way to come in the summer. I didn't like it. I didn't think that they had enough time to themselves in the summer, yeah. you know, early morning, evening, go to bed, get up, let them be kids in the summer. That's where I'm at this year. Sometimes sure. I think we put them on a hamster wheel of expectation and progress at a young age when they're, like you said, little spitfires when they're young. And I think that's where the problem comes because as soon as you put them on that two and a half on the floor or that you're tanking to hard, you're, you're got 10 more years, <laughs> 10 more yeah. years of double backs and facts. And it's yeah. like, those things add up fast. So I think yeah. the greatest coaches that I've uh, learned from Tom Meadows, Nick Ruddick, yourself, other people, they always say like, it's good to have these things on the back burner and know you can. 
but like like you said keep them on the rod keep them on the softer surfaces till they go through puberty get them strong get them fit um and try to delay that till maybe they're like 13 14 15 because then they've mastered technique they're super physically fit they're mentally in tune with what they're doing but you introduce that three years later and then now you have a pretty good window to work with when they're mature um, right? you, i think yeah. the biggest change for me was uh I went to a perform better summit. Yep. I was looking for something outside of gymnastics. Cause I'll go, you know, you Congress is always the one you go to. It wasn't fulfilling. I didn't get anything like different. I'm like, my, I'm like, there has to be, yeah, different. There has to be something different. So I wanted to look outside my sport mm -hmm. and a performer uh, better was in uh, Rhode Island. Providence. Yeah. Like, yep. And so I, I, my wife was uh, outpatient at the time and one of her colleagues, I'm like, let's go. So we went down and I listened to dad, Dan John yep. and Greg Cook, and they were talking, you know, these, these movement patterns. And I'm like, this is fascinating. Yeah. And so I started to research from there and, and testing on myself, the Turkish get up made my shoulders feel better. It right. made me feel better moving so that I just started implementing that into my programming. And then I, it, I kind of started to, to get a lot of pushback, like, Hey, this isn't gymnastics. This is yeah. gymnastics. I'm like, I know it's not necessarily gymnastics. But have you seen how they're pressing on the floor, holding the weight, moving? And I like the, the, the high bridge so the hip is yeah. getting opened up before they slide back. Like that's, that's movement. That's bars. That's a blind yeah. change. This is Looks a lot like a pirouette. <laughs> right? A lot of people are so, paralyzed by not knowing what to do or not knowing, like, is it okay to change my program and start using weights? Is it okay to do less hours and try to go more efficient? Because I think people are kind of nervous about that. So what led you to be okay with like, cause you do so many things that I feel like you're like, Oh, I just do it. Cause I think it's right. And like, if people want to talk in my ear, like whatever, I'll just do my thing. Yeah. So what kind of led you to want, be okay embracing some of that fear and some of that change? I think it was, you know, having a PT as a spouse. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, so, so I'm open to different things. I'm, we, we talk about it all the time over the years, you know, it was, it was always where I had to rehab the kid. Yeah. Well, I wasn't qualified to do that, you know, and so I would, hey, this is the issue. What, what should I do? Well, do this, do that. Try the, you know, how are they moving? So then I, I kind of got an eye for that and it, and it kind of opened my eyes to those things, you know, going sure. to the summit and, and seeing, seeing the benefits of that and just getting outside of gymnastics. Yeah. And I know there's that idea that, well, if it doesn't benefit your sport, you shouldn't do it. Well, who's to say that doesn't benefit the sport? You don't do it. And, you know, because right. there's a lot of athletes out there that don't peak until their senior year. They've been injured. They've been, sure. in, so they didn't make nationals. Yeah. You know, I had an athlete compete for UNH and, you know, she was injured, injured, injured. Well, she anchored bars mm. for them, you know, it, but nobody wanted to give that scholarship. Well, we didn't see her for five years at nationals. Yeah. You know, well, that doesn't mean she's going to not be a good athlete for you. That doesn't mean she's not going to, you know, and I think that mind shift in the kids is, has to happen. Like you can achieve a lot your last two years in high school and you'll achieve a lot in college. Like you're not done at 18 <laughs> necessarily, yeah. you know, you know, look at, you can look at the elites, you know, Allie Reisman when their second Olympics older, you know, skills were bigger, you know, stronger. They look stronger. They look healthier. And I think that's, that comes down to you as the head coach or you as the coach yeah. looking at that kid, looking at every situation and knowing your kids. Mm. knowing where they're at, knowing how they are, knowing the mental, you know, what you can talking to the parents, Hey, they need to sleep more yeah, need, or, or whatever. So that, that you can then program for that individual kid. And I think that, that gives you that consistency and everybody's missing, you know, we can't be consistent. We're not consistent. Well, yeah. what are you consistent with? Yeah. You know, here's the program, you know, we're consistent here, but where are we not consistent? Things we can't control. I can't control how much homework you're being given. I can't control what your parents are feeding. I can't control when you're going to bed. I can tell you these are the things, but then I have to control your numbers and I have to control how you react in the gym a little mm -hmm. bit more.